Welcome to Connective Tissue Lecture. Connective tissue has several different functions. It keeps other tissues in place, it provides support and protection. It fills spaces. Depending upon what type of CT it is, it produces blood cells and stores our lovely fat, thus our energy. And usually, again, depending upon what type of connective tissue it is, it has large amounts of extracellular matrix. Connective tissue is sometimes um, difficult to place specific functions because there is such a wide variety of types, which you'll see as we move forward. There are three main types of cells found within connective tissue. The macrophage cell. This is a white blood cell that moves in and out of the tissue, so it doesn't remain there all the time. It just comes in when it's needed. Here's a quick video to give you a reference. So this is a white blood cell. That has to be one of my favorite videos. That was a white blood cell in um, with red blood cells and platelets that was actually attacking a bacteria. So that is an example of a macrophage cell. And this is my favorite picture. This is, of course, just a representation of a macrophage that is um, going to destroy a virus. So they are our scavengers and defenders. Next we have mast cells. Mast cells communicate chemically. They release histamines. Those of you with allergies are probably very familiar with antihistamines. You need an antihistamine when you have an allergic reaction because your mast cells have released histamines in trying to battle. They're communicating uh, chemically because they're trying to send word out to uh, the other blood cells, the other white blood cells, that they need to take care of something foreign that has come in. Also, mast cells prevent blood clotting in vessels and they increase the flow to injured areas. You need to have an increase of flow to those injured areas to help bring in the other white blood cells that are going to help defend. Because if you have damage to that epithelial tissue, then bacteria of some sort is going to get in. So not only does it help with blood clotting, it increases the flow to injured areas because messengers have probably sent out, possibly by the mast cells through histamines that other white blood cells need to come. The most common of all the cells is fibroblast. Fibro meaning of course fibers, blast meaning growing or budding. So fibroblasts are what are going to grow our protein fibers. There are three types we're going to be looking at, collagenous fibers, these are thick threads from protein made out of collagen. So here would be an example or a diagram of one. They are flexible with great tensile strength. This is what your tendons and ligaments are made up from. Um, when, they, we, when we don't look at them on a microscope slide, if you see them in the body, they're white. Very strong. The next would be reticular fibers. Now reticular fibers um, are just a few of the collagenous fibers. So instead of having a huge bundle, you will only have two or three. These are found mainly in the lymphatic system. And here is a slide with dyed reticular fibers and the lymphatic system, the lymph nodes, the spleen, the lymph vessels and elastic fibers. Elastic fibers are thin branched elastin protein. So the three types of protein fibers that we will see in connective tissue, collagenous, reticular, and elastic. A 
So this is a type of loose connective tissue. And if you would take a look at where the arrows are pointing, the two magenta colored ones, or hot pink, um, are pointing to a certain type. Those are, that is a cell, and this is another type of cell. And this is one type of the protein fibers, the black line, and the other type of protein fibers are those that were stained, that ended up staining pink. So the fibroblast are the magenta ones. Notice how since they produce those fibers, they are almost connected and kind of wrapped into it. The red arrow is pointing to the elastic fibers, and we'll take a look at those a little bit closer. And this is a macrophage, which is going to be moving in and out of the connective. And then the pink ones that are stained pink are the collagen fibers. Our elastic fibers are thin branched uh, elastin protein. They are weaker, but they're very stretchable, which is important. They also have a yellow color when they're in the body. I wanted to quickly show you this. This is a representation of our skin, uh, the epidermis, and this would be the collagens. Notice they are almost little helixes, and they run across horizontally. Our elastic fibers run horizontally and also up vertically. Now, when just look at the green here. Um, this is how they would look whenever they're coiled up, and when they're stretched out, they're pulled this way. The reason I have these X's on it is if you will take and pinch up your hand, the skin on your hand, notice how quickly it will fall back down. Of course that is unless you're over 40 or so. You'll notice it um, does not swing back near as quickly. That's because as you age, these elastin, elastic fibers end up cross-linking and they chemically react and end up binding together so they are not near as stretchy. Well, the first picture, this is like the one you just saw, is loose connective tissue. Uh, it is also called um, areolar tissue. There is lots of ground matrix or kind of the empty spaces through this besides seeing all the different protein fibers. The functions are to bind organs together. This is the one that binds skin to organs and fills spaces between those muscles. It um, has very delicate thin membranes with all that extra space. Mainly fibroblast cells are there with a lots of matrix here again and the collagenous and elastic fibers. Elastic fibers dark and collagenous fibers are those that are dyed pink. And the location between muscles, beneath the skin, and beneath most epithelial cells. So if we look at this, you can see that it is loose. Those fibers are not close together. So the opposite of loose would be tight or dense. So let's take a look at a couple of the dense connective. This is dense regular connective tissue. If you will notice how parallel these collagenous fibers, and there's a few of the elastic fibers in there, how closely they are packed together. There's a few fibroblast cells. Uh, you don't see any in this actual slide here. Now these are very, very strong, but they have a uh, very low or poor blood supply, so they are slow to heal. And the location, ligaments and tendons. So those of you that have had ligament or tendon damage, you know how, how hard it is, um, how slow they are to heal. The function, ligaments bind bone to bone, and tendons bind those tender muscles to bone. So here again, take a look. These are dense, regular connective tissue. So let's look at some dense, irregular connective tissue. This is an example of dense, irregular connective tissue. Notice that uh, the proteins are kind of all jumbled up. They are not parallel. They are matted. This location is the deep layer of skin, the dermis, 
and uh, it is also found around the bones and cartilage. The function is protection and here again connecting. If you'll notice up here you can see some stratified squamous and this of course would be keratinized because all of the nucleus have disappeared. So we have our stratified squamous coming on down and all of this will be our dense irregular connective tissue. Connective tissue, adipose tissue. Adipose tissue is our fat cells. This is what stores our energy in actually the fibroblast cell. Fat droplets are stored in the cytoplasm. They enlarge and crowd up with the other cells. Uh, from my research, uh, it's not that you have a lot of division, mitotic division going on in your adipose, uh, your adipose cells, that with the tissue, you just gain more and more fat droplets in there. Location, I think we all know where our, la our adipose tissue or our fat is located, beneath the skin, around the kidney and heart, and in the breast. The function, insulation, and fat storage. Here is actually reticular connective tissue. We talked about one of the three types of tissues, uh, I'm sorry, of proteins, or the collagenous fibers and the reticular fibers. And this is made up of reticular fibers. So it's just a few of the collagenous fibers. So only two or three collagenous fibers. So it has its own name, reticular. This is how it can be drawn uh, as a sketch. The fibroblast here has a special name called the reticular cell. This is also in the lymphatic system. Function, immunity, production of blood cells. Location, in the lymph nodes, the spleen, the thymus, the liver, and red bone marrow. If you will continue on with part two of connective tissue, we will go from there and cover some of the not so ordinary or not proper connective tissue but still classified as connective tissue will cover cartilage and the types of cartilage, bone, and blood. Thank you.